Good morning and welcome to our first online church service. Although we are physically isolating, well, I hope we are not socially isolating and that you can join us every day on this hub. But this week has gone quite quickly in how we've progressed with this whole situation that we're experiencing. And I think over this last week there have been a few things that I have reflected upon and, and learned a lesson about. The first thing is that I think uh, I, want to, I, I appreciate the important things in life a lot more. Secondly, I've learned to value and be grateful for what um, I have. Friends, family, church, food on my table. Thirdly, a lesson I hope to learn after all of this blows over is that I will always greet and meet people properly and give them the time of day that they deserve. But another lesson I think I've learned is that we can be very busy in life with the not so important things. We all seem to be rushing around. My life can be busy doing, well, fluff. Before we finish one task, we're starting the other. There's always background noise. There's, we're always being exposed to images on social media or our phones or pinging, telling, te telling us we have a new text or something is going on. And whether we like it or not, I think this lifestyle can distract us from what is important and also from us growing in our relationship with God and the way we do church. This week has been really important for me in that I've had to evaluate the priorities of doing church, stripping everything back to the bare essentials. The early church, they met and they devoted themselves to prayer, to praise, to reading the word of God, to uh, sharing resources and helping each other. It's so easy to be busy at church, to do church and and not reflect on God. It's so easy to sing songs or pray to God and not reflect on the words that we're saying or to whom we are expressing ourselves to. Psalm 8 starts and ends with, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. And the passage that we're looking at today, Psalm 67, seems to capture this desire to admire and give thanks and praise to God. And I want us to look at Psalm 67. If you've got your Bibles, please turn to Psalm 67 and we will look at verse 1. The, the, the passage of scripture is also on the link on this page, if you would like to read it. But it goes like this. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Salah. So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all the nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. What a tremendous passage that is. But I want to focus on a word. My first point is this. Verse 1 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. And in the Hebrew, there is a word that we skim over that is written and it's not always in our texts. And it is the word Salah. Now this word is used 74 times in the Hebrew Bible. And it is used 72 times in the Psalms and 3 times in Habakkuk. Now although the exact meaning of the word is unknown there are different interpretations for the word and there are two potential meanings the first meaning is this to stop and just lift up our hands in praise and the second meaning could be to simply 
pause. Now, some people would argue that this, this word sala is a musical direction to the singers and instrumentalists who performed the songs, which was in the hymn book of the Israelites. If this is true, then each time sala is used or appears in the song, the musicians may have paused either to take breath or to sing a cappella or let the instruments play alone. Perhaps they were pausing to praise God about whom the song was speaking. Perhaps even lifting their hands in worship to God. This would encompass all those meanings to, to praise, to, to lift up, to pause. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Pause. If you're watching this video online, then perhaps now could be a time to pause what we're doing. Press the pause button and to reflect on God. Now, I personally think that in today's society, more than ever, we need to recognize and pay careful attention to this word, so. God, God's word is unchanging and what he meant to say for the people living thousands of years ago, he means to say for us today. Here is God telling us to pause, to stay still, to seek him, and to wait upon him with expectancy. And I think the situation that we are facing now, although it is worrying, and there are people who are stressed, and there are people who are anxious and fearful, although we may be physically isolating, now could be a good opportunity to take stock and listen about God. This is the way that God's Holy Spirit can meet us and speak to us. The second thing I want to pick up about Psalm 67 is that it is also a wonderful song and a call to worship God. Exodus chapter 9, we see that God tells Moses, go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go so that they may worship me. Throughout the ages, the Jewish families sit together. They eat a meal in celebration of the Passover. When God caused the spirit of death to pass over the firstborn of Israel. Now fathers teach their children this Exodus story. They emphasize that they are a chosen people, that God loved them so much that he delivered Israel from bondage over under Pharaoh. God said, let my people go. Exodus is about God saving Israel. But they sometimes forget that they may worship me. God saved them so that they may worship me. Christians today do the same thing. We, we teach and we preach Jesus as a saviour, friend, the one who well, walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Yeah, true enough. But we sometimes overlook the preoccupation of God himself to be worshipped and glorified by, by all of the nations. Now, it would seem more than any other time that this would be appropriate as we face this global problem. The psalm teaches that God's purpose is to be known and praised and enjoyed and feared among all of the nations. Verse 2. So that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among the nations. God is to be known. Verse 3. May the people praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The second thing is God wants to be praised. God is to be known. God is to be praised. When it says in verse 3, may the peoples praise you, it's not just referring to a group of people, Bethany City Church or a church down the road, or even a few countries. It means all tribes, all tongues and nations, all peoples. The Bible speaks of a day when all tribes, tongues and nations will worship Jesus in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Clearly this is not happening today. So God is to be known, he is to be praised. Verse 4. May the nations be glad and sing for joy for your rule 
for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. God is to be enjoyed. He's to be known, he's to be praised, he's to be enjoyed. And lastly, verse 7, May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. God is to be feared. He is to be known, he's to be praised, he's to be enjoyed, he's to be feared. Now this is not a bad example to follow, especially as we learn to deal and handle with this global situation we're experiencing. If only the nations knew God, if only the nations would praise God, if only the nations would enjoy God, if only the nations feared God. And I think about myself. Do I do that in my life? Do I know God as my personal Savior? Do I praise Him in all things? Do I enjoy Him? Do I fear God in the sense I come before him with awe and reverence? If all Christians rejoice, delighted, praise and worship God with a deep and sincere heart, I think a lot more nations would be Christian. But let me finish this morning with this. I want to finish with the link between verse 1 and verse 2. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Verse 2, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all the nations. So that, may God be blessed so that the nations may know you. The point I want to stress this morning is this, that God blesses his people, that is us, for the sake of the nations. God promises blessing to his people because he wants us to, to be a blessing to our neighbours and, and the nations around us. I think this is a wonderful time as Christians, although hard, although scary, although difficult, although uncertain, we are presented with an opportunity to bless our neighbours, to bless our nation, to bless, to bless the nation. And so I encourage us to think, going back, devoting ourselves to prayer, to praise, to the Word of God, to sharing the resources. I encourage us to pray for our nations. Pray for our local communities at this time and pray for one another. I also pray that we as Christians are able to stand up, although difficult as this may be, and as scary as this may be, as Christians we stand up and that we are able to reflect the glory of God in our generosity, in our care, that we are able to be a witness to the people around us who do not know God as their saviour. So I want to summarise and sum up, I suppose. We're landing here. Let me end with this. During this difficult and busy time, I encourage you to do two things. First of all is this, like that sauna. To take time out, to hit the pause button and spend time with God. Hit the pause button and reflect on those things we can take for granted and to be grateful for. Friends, family, church, the internet, food. But secondly, I also encourage us all during this time to pray for our nations. Pray that the world during this global pandemic may get on their knees and know God. That the, the world may come to realise that we cannot continue the way that we're living. Busy, over the top, but that they meet their maker in a real way. That they can praise him that the nations and the people on this earth can enjoy God and that we do not worry about the situation that we're facing, but we are able to enter his gates with thanksgiving and joy and a sense of awe and reverence. We serve a wonderful God. Thank you for listening. I'll see you soon. God bless.